I just got back home from watching Christopher Nolan's brand new movie, The Oppenheimer. And I gotta say, it was worth the wait. It was worth the hype. And Nolan set out to deliver a really cinematic masterpiece. A masterclass of a film. And to put it into some kind of context, I have not seen any IMAX movies. Or I haven't seen any movies in IMAX. I think the last one I saw was Avengers Infinity War. And that was way back in 2018. So you can understand how I was really excited. How I was really so hyped for this movie. And especially me coming back to IMAX. IMAX after god knows how many years. Not only that I'm coming back to watch IMAX for the very first time in a long 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 time, but I'm coming back to the IMAX theaters watching a Christopher Nolan movie. And I cannot stress this enough to you guys, but you guys have to watch Oppenheimer in IMAX. I swear, this is worth watching in IMAX. Especially in a 70mm IMAX, which is how he shot this entire movie. And as he explains it, it's the highest quality imaging format ever devised. It basically means that it gives you a really incredible sense of immersion in that image or movie that you are watching. So with all of that being said, of course, I had to watch this in IMAX. So let's delve into this movie. Of course, no spoilers. Julius Robert Oppenheimer, who was among the key contributors who gifted or I should say maybe cursed the entire world with the atomic bomb. Hence, he's known to be the father of the atomic bomb. In my opinion, there are all the reasons as to why there's so much hype on Christopher Nolan's upcoming project, The Oppenheimer. And I expected coming into this movie to be a cinematic marvel. And to that, I would say Christopher Nolan delivered in that department. The thing which has intrigued most for many fans and audience all over the world and that's including myself is if you follow the earlier updates related to this movie, you would remember that it was stated that it would be released as a black and white biopic of the scientist. But as soon as the first trailer dropped for this movie, we all witnessed it in color pictures. Now it all makes sense with the first spark of the nuclear bomb test explosion on July 16, 1945. The whole world lost its colors. All that remained after the explosion was only the black clouds and the white ashes that have burned the entire world. The movie will intend to use this as a really great metaphor on how we ourselves made the most destructive weapon of mankind and strangled our own happiness in this world. We also get to know from the trailers alone that the movie will set on the timeline around 40 to 50 years, which will include everything from Oppenheimer's infamous The Manhattan Project, the ideologies of his communist parties, his personal philosophies, his life after making the atomic bomb, his connection with the Bhagavad Gita, and how his psychological state was suffering before and after making the atomic bomb. I mean, just imagine that you are or have been associated with a project that has the potential to take millions of innocent lives in a matter of just seconds. You know that the work that you're doing or have done will never let you rest in peace for the remaining years of your life and yet you complete this project with the knowledge and understanding that this weapon could be a really massive destructive killer. And yet mankind still decides to push that button. Christopher Nolan has very well displayed the emotions and the psychological psychological state that Oppenheimer had to go through during those days. Coming to the next big aspect of the movie is the cast. This movie will feature Hollywood's most respected and celebrated A-list actors like Killian Murphy as Oppenheimer, RDJ as Louis Strauss, Matt Damon as Leslie Groves, Jack Quaid as Richard Feynman, Emily Blunt as Catherine Oppenheimer, Florence Pugh, and many more 40 such other supreme artists like this will be seen in this movie. Another thing to notice from this movie is that when Oppenheimer is projected to be in this deep state of thought, the background becomes a little blurry or distorted. This is a reference from the Nat Geographic series The Genius, which showed Albert Einstein's thought process with an in-room imagination using the VFX and all the other things in the room becoming still and blurry. I don't know, I thought it was a pretty cool reference in my part. Also, I gotta give credit to the trailers because the trailers did not reveal too much of the VFX that has been used in the movie. The trailer really teases the audience to wanting to watch the movie even more because everyone expects a really great VFX spectacle from Christopher Nolan himself. One more thing that most people expect from a Christopher Nolan movie is the way he makes the viewers feel, not to display the emotions and intensity of that particular scene in your own way. Take for example Dunkirk. Several scenes of it had absolute pure silence. No BGM, no dialogues, just pure silence. In this moment of tranquility, there is an awkward but deep connection that the viewers establish with that said scene and it makes them realize that what they have just witnessed is an absolute truth. A sad one, but it's the truth. This is one of the reasons why Christopher Nolan's movies are just so celebrated and beloved by many people and especially as film lovers like myself, unlike other directors. Christopher Nolan gives each viewer his or her own unique experience according to their emotional quotient, and hence its memories last with them for a much longer time. That's why whenever I feel so depressed or if my life is just falling apart right in front of my eyes, I just put in the entire Dark Knight trilogy on my TV, I watch all three of them in one sitting, and after finishing it with The Dark Knight Rises, I just come out a different 
different human being. I feel more motivated. I don't know how, but I just feel like I can do anything. There's this one interview that Christopher Nolan did and he saw this tweet from Twitter and the way he answers this is probably the best way to describe all of Christopher Nolan's movies. My life is like a Christopher <laughs> Nolan movie. I don't really understand what's going on. <laughs> <laughs> what would you tell him or, or her? <laughs> I'd say don't try to understand it, just feel it. In summary, the movie came up with a really good serious tone and I gotta give creds to the trailers because they did not reveal much of the VFX or even the star-studded cast who were part of this movie. Oppenheimer will make us rethink that how is it possible to trust each other when we are equipped with such weapons of mass destruction. And lastly, it will make us realize and think the extent to which humans have stooped down on morals and are we willing to sacrifice more to continue on that path? Depictions of Oppenheimer's story often explores the moral complexity and the ethical dilemma scientists face in creating destructive weapons. The dramatic tensions arise from the weight of the decisions made during the Manhattan Project and the profound impact these decisions had on humanity and the world. I mean, Oppenheimer had a lot of restless nights where he was just overthinking and thinking to the abyss of like how he created a literally god-killing weapon. Many critics have frequently praised works that examine Oppenheimer's story for their exploration of deep themes such as scientific responsibilities, the human cost of war, and the destructive power of technology. These explorations can be emotionally resonant and thought-provoking, leaving a lasting impact on the audience. So in summary, to end this video, all I gotta say is just watch Oppenheimer, especially watch it in IMAX. Just by the tone and vibes of this movie, you just gotta see it in IMAX, the perfect way where Nolan really wants us to watch basically all of his movies. And I can confirm that this movie for sure, in my opinion, in my humble opinion, is a pure 10 out of 10. So go watch Oppenheimer, especially the right way, which is in IMAX, and you won't regret it because Oppenheimer may be Christopher Nolan's best movie yet. And this isn't coming from recency bias because as someone who rewatches a shit ton of Nolan's filmography, I think Oppenheimer will make people realize that Nolan is actually one of the best directors that we have in this generation. Because to this day, many people still think that Christopher Nolan's movies are overrated, which I think is a big dumb dumb doo-doo take. I mean, this isn't me saying that all of Christopher Nolan's movies are like perfect and a masterpiece. As someone who's watched Tenet and did not really enjoy it that much, I could understand why many people could you know, have a bit of a hard time getting into Nolan's movies. And yeah, I totally get that. But to say that he's overrated, I mean, bro, what are you talking about? So yeah, thank you so much for watching my videos. I hope you guys go see Oppenheimer. It's a really wonderful masterpiece of a movie. And I'll see you soon on the next video. So stay safe, guys.